is this really it? By lunchtime on my first day of my first full-time job, I felt this drop in the pit of my stomach. A stable corporate job and bi-weekly paycheck was my dream for the longest time. But now that I finally had it, I felt really anxious if I could really live like this every day. But I just told myself it's all good, it's just the start, things can get better. Spoiler alert, things did not get better. Corporate politics, stagnant salaries, misogyny and racism, microaggressions, unpurposeful and unfulfilling work. Three years later, I ended up quitting. But the good thing was by that point when I actually did quit, I had already built digital real estate online, AKA a body of work and content, which was also making money and it was growing. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the key strategies that helped me slowly escape my nine to five and transition into building my digital business. I will also share with you important tips that I wish I knew sooner when I was building this on top of my nine to five you are gonna want to grab a notebook, grab a pen, you're gonna be taking notes because we are gonna be covering a ton. Now, shall we begin? In the past, you first had to invest money into a physical space or real estate and create ads to start a business. Today, you can create your digital real estate and start your business at zero dollars, potentially reaching hundreds, thousands, and even millions of potential customers for your business. When I say digital real estate, I'm talking about your content, I'm talking about your platform. We are living in a day and age where we are so privileged to be able to connect with other people with just a phone and internet. I started creating digital real estate on content that was personal and educational about personal finances, investing, and the mundane corporate life. Back then, personal finances was my thing. I would be binging through books and podcasts about personal finances while I was on the subway to work and I couldn't stop yapping to my family and friends telling them to start investing in the stock market. That community started growing. People started reaching out to me for services because they saw me as a thought leader. So ask yourself these questions, take some time to journal upon them. What topics can you keep yapping about with no problem to other people? What topics intrigue you so much and you're just always interested in learning more about? What specific skills do you have from work or just life in general? What experiences or changes or transformations have you gone through? And if you were to give a TED talk or write a biography of yourself, what would the contents contain? You might have one, a few, or a multitude of different answers. And these are all great clues as to content ideas you might want to start thinking about or the direction, how you want to start off positioning yourself out online. You should even ask your family, friends, acquaintances, and or even bosses to see what kind of insights they can give you in terms of what makes you stand out. Now, my second tip is so, so important, and this is going to help you make money sooner rather than later in your business. But so many people avoid this like the plague. Tell people literally to pay you and how they can pay you. People want to pay you. They're looking for a reason. So give them a reason to pay you. A course, coaching offer, a product, send them the link and tell them where the sales page is or where the payment link is. I wish I knew and I did this sooner, but I overcomplicated the whole process thanks to marketing bros. And I was also very embarrassed and really ashamed of talking about money. It felt really gross and I thought I would seem like a greedy, selfish, just unfeminine woman to be talking about my offers. But the moment I started telling people how I could help them through a coaching offer or a course, that was when people actually stepped up and they started paying me. It only took me a year to do this. I truly believe that someone in the highest form of service will be open and expanded to talk about money, to be open to receiving money and not let ego get into their way because they are really focused on serving other people. So make sure your digital real estate also has content on how you serve other people, how people can pay you. If you hide it, you are only doing yourself and other people a big disservice. Now let's talk about the platform you want to be on when you're creating your digital real estate. At the very least, here is my base level recommendation to be on a platform of your choice and also have an email list. And then once you have the ball rolling, you have the time and capacity, you can take it up a notch and have one short form platform, one long form platform, and an email list. Choose a platform that you enjoy consuming content on and or a platform that you find relatively easy and comfortable to create on. 
for me back then it was Instagram because I was such a newbie at creating content so Instagram was a lot quicker for me to learn and put content out there versus long form content like videos on YouTube that had a steeper learning curve for me. Something I really wish I did back then was start my email list and send out emails to my community because I didn't know how easy, simple and just how powerful it was with reaching your right people and building a connection and of course getting paid for your work. You can also join my five day free email course where I go more in depth about what to focus on as you are building your part time aligned business, how to structure your time and schedule even with a job in life and how to also start selling and making money. We are so used to the identity of being an employee or taking the safe path or being told what to prioritize by a boss. And because of that, I had to practice embodying an entrepreneurial mindset and identity while I was building my business. And I'll share with you some examples of how I've done it and how you can also do the same. One of the most important things I learned was to take action sooner rather than dwell in mindset drama, waiting for all the pieces of the puzzle to fit in perfectly together. That is never gonna happen in entrepreneurship. The pieces of the puzzle will never be perfect and complete. The sooner you put yourself and things out there, the sooner you're gonna learn if something is gonna work or not, and it gives you clues to the business that you're meant to build. The sooner you start, the quicker you're gonna learn and master important skills as well. I also practice calling the shots for myself without having a boss or a teacher telling me what to do. I got to decide what kind of content I wanted to post, how often I was going to be posting, the offers I wanted to make, how much I was going to charge for everything. These were many decisions that I was held responsible for. And I got to also change my mind anytime I wanted to because I was the boss. Now that took me a while to really get used to because I would spend so much time and energy wondering if I made the right move, if there was the right blueprint to the things, but in entrepreneurship, there's no right and wrong. What's right for so many other people might not be right for you and vice versa. What's great for you might not be right for someone else. I also started realizing that quitting my job was not risky. In fact, not quitting my job was such a risky move. I was able to zoom out and start to really look at myself objectively bigger picture. I was 24, single, unmarried with no kids. This was the time for me to really go all in with a business I was feeling very aligned with. I had a purpose and a mission. And if not now, then when? I would regret this big time. Great entrepreneurs can really take a zoomed out perspective and really detach from emotions. You can literally access so many different entrepreneurs' brains for free online through podcasts, books, YouTube, and really learn a lot from them. But I will say be very intentional with who you choose to listen to because there are so many different mentalities, so many different approaches out there. As I said, there is no one right or wrong. There's only what's right for you. And I don't recommend listening to someone preaching hustle culture when that really doesn't sit well for you. So listen to your body and see if it makes your body feel very restricted and repulsive or if it expands you and it makes you feel tapped into abundance and possibilities. Your instincts will help guide you towards the mentor, the business, and the life you want to create. And if you're still listening, chances are you resonate with my approach. So if you want to learn more, just consume my other YouTube videos. And I also recommend checking out my podcast. There's a lot more depth and information over there. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Warren Buffett. Financially, I'm willing to invest in myself with money. I'm willing to invest my time and energy. I'm willing to invest my focus and my attention because the outcome now is that I'm now very comfortable and confident with sharing myself, my perspectives and wisdom online on different platforms, on creating consistently, selling different offers and making all these entrepreneurial decisions myself and just leading a life that I feel very aligned with. I've worked with clients like Julius who have seen the value of investing in themselves and their personal growth and development and through our time working together, we have been able to build his community from zero, straight from scratch, all the way to a community of over a thousand people. He's now very comfortable with showing up consistently. He also signed a few clients after we implemented a super simple sales and mindset strategy that felt aligned to him. Coaching is meant to help you see your blind spots, to see the opportunities and new ways of doing things that you might not 
otherwise be able to see. You will be pushed outside of your comfort zone, but you will also feel safe and held by the support of your mentor or your coach who is there to guide you and show you the ropes. Investing in yourself is so, so important. And if you want to do this work with me, I have a coaching container called Confident Creator Coaching CCC. You can learn more at www.nicolecoke.com slash coaching. The link is also in the description box. My first investment was a $997 Instagram coaching course that taught me how to use Instagram for a business. I made back that money plus more in seven months when I signed my first high ticket client for $1,500. My next investment was a very hefty and scary investment of 10 grand into business coaching for two months with this business coach and even though it wasn't the greatest experience because the mentor was in this lack scarcity mode that made me feel very misaligned, the coaching still pushed me outside of my comfort zone and I was able to make back that investment within the next two to three months. Investing in yourself and doing the work with a coach or a mentor can really accelerate not just your growth in entrepreneurship and your finances, but also your connection with yourself and your confidence. And of course, as I have said, make sure that you choose your mentors, the people you learn from very wisely. It is not too late to start building your digital real estate, even on top of your nine to five job. You can start today with small action steps and who knows, this could be the start of your slow escape from your nine to five job. If you wanna learn more, make sure you join my free five day email course on how you can build your aligned part-time business and if you're ready to take that next step, CCC is where we can work on your confidence, your content and business system, and your lifestyle habits for effective time and energy management. All the links are going to be linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sending you so much love and good energy. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and week. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.